Hi everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night refilling service. We want you to know how much we miss all of you and how much we love you. We can't wait to hug your necks again. Let's pray for our service tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word. We thank you that it falls on good ground and it will change our lives for the good forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Let's enjoy worship. Hi everyone, welcome to our service tonight. We're just really blessed to be with you. Why don't we take a moment right now and open up in prayer and just spend a moment worshiping the Lord together. Father, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful for the opportunity to gather here to worship you and to bring honor to Jesus. Holy Spirit, we give honor to you. We direct our hearts toward you with love and great honor. We worship you with thanksgiving. 
Thank you for your protection over all of our lives. Thank you, Father God, that you are a strong tower. We run therein and find safety. We pray, Father, today for all of our health care workers, those that are in the hospital sick with the virus. We pray for a quick recovery, healing, miraculous miracles taking place. Those that are on the vent to actually overcome the odds and that we can have a 100% recovery rate. And we just worship you and bring honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know how much we really do treasure you and honor you. What a great pleasure it is to be with you. And um, we've been on a journey for the last couple of weeks on our Wednesday night services through our um, like springboarding from our Sunday programs into our uh, Wednesday nights. And so today we want to go in the same measure. We want to take a moment and just do a little bit of uh, study from the scriptures. And we're going to talk about ultimately the uniqueness about following Jesus. But, you know, last week we started off with developing the strong spirit. And I believe that that's very, very important. That is something that every one of us should be in high pursuit of. That we're really um, desiring to be one with Jesus in heart, one in mind, one in passion. That there's a driving force behind our lives. And that is to become united with Him in, a, in an area of life or even on a level of life that we've never been before. And so when I say we're striving for a strong spirit, what we're really believing for is um, having our hearts more united to the Lord than ever before, where we hear His voice, we're prepared for tomorrow, today. Uh, tomorrow we'll be, we will be prepared for the days to come because of my connection with Jesus. And so let me just give you a couple things about developing a heart united with Jesus. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, the Word of God says this. Now I'm going to read to you out of the Amplified Bible, but it says, Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, this is what I love, that in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen or relax our courage and faint. Now listen. He says here, if you do not lose heart, if you don't quit acting nobly or doing those things that are right, in time, time is working for us, the appropriate season, that season is coming, we shall reap. If you don't loosen or relax your courage and faint. So the goal is to never give way in any measure to slackness. No, we want to be very disciplined in letting our decisions to follow Jesus be the driving force to be united with Him. Now, one of the reasons that we're, we're striving for a spirit that is strong, a heart that beats one with the Lord, is because a strong spirit allows us to help other people. Now, what's so unique about right now is that not only are we turning the curve, our numbers in Lafouche over the last few days have been super strong. We need to remain vigilant and in prayer for those who are in the hospitals, ICUs, especially those who are on vents. The ventilators, those who are going on ventilators, their, their odds are not very good for them to come off of it. But you know, we're going to believe God that we're going to enter into a season where our medical prof uh, professionals can tap into the wisdom of God and to know how to deliver everyone who goes on to those events and get them off. Come on, Jesus, help our professionals with divine wisdom and those who are sick today to recover fully, all of them, in Jesus' name. So we want to be men and women who are strong to be able to help others. Romans 15, 1 says, We then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. So here we have this, this exhortation that a strong spirit empowers you to bear the weaknesses, the brokenness of those who are struggling in life. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32 tells us this, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. But Jesus says, the strong spirit. 
I prayed for you that thy faith faileth not and that when you are converted that you will strengthen your brethren so here we find Jesus the strong example the leader of the family telling us telling Peter that he's praying for us that we can be as he is as he prays for us now we step in the middle and our our gifting now is to give those around us a good taste of Jesus don't you like that I really do so let's talk about now the key to following Jesus is to be made a disciple or to be made a fisher of men the quality in the kingdom of God of being a fisher of men is meekness all right meekness is really key where you're able to walk in an area where you yield your rights to God so that he can manifest through you now I have a desire that every one of us are in such a place where God manifests himself through us but it comes with the heart that that really beats for or beats in meekness so that our rights are yielded to God and so we oppose everything then that separates me from the presence of the Lord now, I want to share some thoughts with you about following Jesus. And I want to, uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm not disturbed. I'm on task. This beautiful butterfly is flying right around uh, where I'm ministering to you at right now. And it's so wonderful. It's uh, just fluttering all over. So perhaps it's just a, a good token that Jesus is saying, follow me. Glory to God. But Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, he says, follow me. And... If you follow him, in other words, I am endeavoring to take my steps to follow him. And then he says, in your endeavors to follow me, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you like I am. Remember how he told Peter, Peter, Satan longs to sift you. He wants to just do away with your life. But I'm praying for you. And I want you to know that when you are converted, and I want you to take a study and look at something if you'd like to. On the time frame that Peter was away from the Lord, it was so short. I mean, he denied the Lord because of fear and uncertainty about his own future. But at the same moment, he apparently he ran off to John's house, the disciple of love. And John ministered grace to him because the next time that we see Peter, he's with John. Wow. So at the resurrection of Jesus... Peter and John were together. So Peter didn't run away like back into the world. I mean, he tripped over himself. And so he was then brought back to life. He was converted. And he then began to become the man that Jesus had always called him to be. A great leader. A great example of the kingdom of God. And he was made into a fisher of men. And if you will remember, he was a fisher of fish. And now he's now capturing the hearts of men Now, one of the beautiful things that I've discovered about fishing in the course of history not just now but in the course of history that fish have always been attracted to light in the listen in the darkness everything is attracted to the light it's just the way that God has designed creation and so in Jesus's day just like it is in ours if you will put up a big bright light and you put it out in a position where it is it the fish can can be attracted to it you can capture a lot of fish you can catch a ton of fish because of the opportunity that the light brings to you I remember Jesus is the light of the world our job is to put him in a place where he can shine through us to other folks how do we do that I give my heart to him. I follow hard after him. So let's go through some things real quickly. And I'm sure that for those of you who have been fishing uh, before, you, uh, I know that I really enjoy fishing at night and a, a nice bright light. And I also like to sleep at night. So I don't do this very often. But man, if the fish are on, it is so much fun to watch the fish boil up on the surface of the water and just fling out your little lure out there and just load up on fish. It's a ball. If you've never done it, you need to prepare and plan yourself a trip to go night fishing. So Jesus is the light of the world. 
You agree with that? I do. I believe that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. So in him, there's no darkness at all. So Jesus is ultimate light. Now, I'm the follower of the light. As he's in the light, I'm to be a follower of that light. But I also recognize this, that if I, if I exercise what we talked about last week, repentance, where I, I begin to recognize the darkness that surfaces in me, my insecurities, my fears, my frustrations, my anger, uh, any lust in my life, displeasure, when those things come up, if the light is shining and I can see it, right, and I'm close enough to Jesus, I can confess that before the Lord. He's faithful and just to forgive me. He cleanses me from all righteousness. So that means in order to walk with the light, I have to constantly be in a position that I want to mature. That's called repentance. So repentance now is that I willingly look for God's way of living, God's way of life. And I change my perspective on life and I change the way I think on purpose to avoid all sin, even the very appearance of sin. Now I read this quote, D.L. Moody says this, man was born with his back to God. And when he repents, he turns around to face God. So I, I, I just love that thought process that repentance is always giving me the opportunity to face the master who then will ultimately fill my life with who he is. And that's what we should all be looking for, the character of Christ. So when you come to God, through humility, it causes you to recognize that we need to live in the presence of the Lord. Now, Jesus is our good shepherd, and we're the sheep of his flock. And we've been told that we need to uh, hear his voice. And as disciples, we need to do what he says, and then he will reflect his life through us. So here's the goal. He's the good shepherd. We hear his voice. He leads us where we need to go. We're disciples. We do what he says. And then he's reflected through us. John 14, 10 says, The words that I speak unto you are not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. So Jesus says, I'm speaking to you words. I'm giving you insight because I'm your shepherd. So as sheep, we follow the good shepherd and we get his results. So I have this really cool analogy here that right before we close, I want, to, I want to share with you that the moon is reflected light because the moon has no light of its own, but it reflects the light of the sun. And so most believers reflect what the Lord does and he wants us to follow him. And I don't, listen, I'd rather be a reflection of Jesus than not. And I know that it's the same with you. But Jesus wants us to walk so closely to him that there's a transference of his light to us so that his light flows from us and we become the light. Remember, Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. So if the world is dark, if your neighborhood is dark, we need to learn how to shine the light. Now, listen, ultimately we're looking for results, so I want to encourage you not to be discouraged but to ask Jesus, who is the light, how do we turn him on in our neighborhoods? How do we bring revival to our neighborhoods? How do we do that? Well, he has the answer. And I believe that the more we press into his presence, the more that we'll get his light so that then we can be a part of the team that wins the neighborhood. Because listen, if I'm responsible for my neighborhood and you're responsible for your neighborhood, and then when we are on social media, we're responsible for the world. Remember, if the world is dark, it's because the church is not doing its job. You're the light of the world. You're the gift of God to this world. You're the reflection of Jesus in this earth. And it's time that we take our places. Quit cursing the darkness when you have the power to override it. Jesus is the light of the world. And he said, but I made you the light of the world. All we have to do, I believe, is follow him. And then ultimately, it's easy. We catch fish. So I believe that God expects us to live out the true character of Christ, which is being the light of God. And remember, I, I really do believe that that's, this all hinges on meekness. Meekness is me yielding my rights to God so that he can manifest himself through me. That is the character of Christ. Now in Galatians 2 verse 20, it says, I no longer live, but Christ should live in me. And if Jesus is the light of the world, and he is, then you're the light of the world. 
And it all comes with following him. John 14, 21 tells us this. He that loveth me, he, in other words, I love him enough to follow him, shall be loved of my father. And I will love him also and will manifest myself to him. So here's this beautiful promise. The love of the father and the manifestation of the presence of Jesus is all hinged on my ability to draw nigh unto him. So I want you to do something. I want you to be led by the Spirit of God. I want you to follow Jesus and allow him to manifest his glory to you. So let's take a moment tonight and let's pray together. I want you to get your faith out with us that the glory of God and the kingdom of God is going to be manifested right there, right now in your home with you in this Bible study. And then as you draw near every single day, the light will shine brighter to you. The light will then fly, will actually uh, flow from you into your your uh, work associates, your neighbors, your neighborhood. And I have faith to believe that there is a move of heaven that is building right now that's available to us. And I want you and I to be a part of it. Are you ready for that? I am. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to do something marvelous in all of our lives. Father God, make us strong in our spirit. Make us strong in our heart to where we, we reunite ourselves with you. And then we follow you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And ultimately, in following you, be, we become one with you. And as a result of that, we catch men. We win men and women to Jesus. So, Father, thank you for the anointing and the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. But, guys, I want you to know that we dearly love you. We, we, we're actually, uh, we pray for you. I, I, I spend my time um, looking for little nuggets to feed you every single day. So when you get an opportunity, I hope you're, you're getting our text messages to feed you. And to encourage you that if you get a little down in life, you're going to get sucked right up out of that stuff. You're going to be bold and strong. Amen. And so listen, I want to just take a moment to thank you that if um, you've been actively given into our offerings, we're so grateful. And it's such a blessing to know your commitment to Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you, if you have it on your heart to give tonight, you can go to the prompt and, and, just, and just sow your seed in faith knowing that your tomorrows are being affected by your your actions today. So guys, we love you. We look forward to being with you again on Sunday morning. I, I just really believe we're in the process of turning this corner. And I do believe that very, very shortly, within the next week or so, we're going to be able to gather together at church. But I think this is going to be a part of our ministry as well. Socially reaching out to our community via uh, internet. And so I want you to uh, learn to be a part of it. And so we're going to encourage you, be a missionary, be an evangelist, be a prophet of God, be a pastor. Reach out to people, encourage them. You have every opportunity to be connected to people if you will do it. But you have to become active in your doing. So do it. Amen. And be a blessing. So I call you blessed on the increase. Favor ain't fair, but you got it. So shine big. And remember this, as long as you let Jesus be the Lord of your life, You'll always win in life. God bless you. We love you so much and can't wait to hug you real big. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.